Sure. Uh, yeah, I was very lucky to get a summer internship right after my uh, freshman year at Villanova. My name is Sam Petrofetta, uh, originally from Hamilton, New Jersey, but uh, Cherry Hill is where I've lived all the, most of the time I worked here for RCA. Uh, my first uh, year was, uh, I believe, uh, 1956, but that was in Morristown on the Talos program, where I worked three months there. But since I was a ham radio operator and uh, was really interested in radio rather than computer things and stuff that blew things up, uh, I asked if I could be in a, something that did something with radios. So they sent me to Camden. And I wound up working for uh, Irv Jaffe uh, on the ARR 48 data link receiver. Uh, and uh, they had problems when we went uh, at the end of the uh, summer and was always wondering if they solved the problem. And uh, uh, the group was really great and they had a they had a DC shift in the output of an FM discriminator. And what they did was they used a uh, differentiator and then reconstituted it. And that's when I knew I was working with a good group of guys, great group of guys. And uh, then I came back and continued working on that job. And uh, I wound up with some very good uh, assignments. And as I graduated, they gave me a good offer. And, uh, Started working in the uh, summer of 1959. Uh, came in and started working on uh, uh, that same receiver, actually, and then uh, doing some modifications of some existing uh, UHF, VHF, UHF transceivers. The old ARC-27, which was made by Collins, and the ARC-34 was made by RCA. So we made, instead of just a plain old AM transmitter, we made a FM transmitter out of it also. So that was one of the assignments. So as you were starting out, did you have uh, a mentor or a senior engineer or somebody that showed you the ropes? Uh, pretty much Irv Jaffe was uh, the guy that uh, I really worked for. And uh, he, I worked for him. He was my engineer, and then he became my manager when I was an engineer. So uh, one of the jobs that I worked on after that was uh, called the Dinosaur Project, or the X-20. And that was in, uh, let's see, that was in the, like 61, 62. Uh, but that was a great big job. It was very similar to the space shuttle, but it was a strictly Air Force job. And uh, they wound up ha having a budget that was way too small for what they wanted, and the job was canceled. However, one of the things that we did on that job was make a search and rescue transceiver since the, uh, the landing uh, parameters were that they didn't know where it was going to land. It didn't have wheels, it had brushes for landing gear, and they wanted to have a good range. They wanted like a five watt transmitter as receiver. So uh, we did that, and uh, we had a, uh, one of the first hot, pretty high powered uh, VHF transceivers, like five watts. And uh, you couldn't get transistors at that time to give you that kind of power at that frequency, 243 mega, megahertz. So uh, Bob Reese uh, designed a multiplier, a uh, tripler, so we had our power at 81 megahertz and tripled it, and that worked out very well. So uh, when they canceled the dinosaur job, they did continue development. They allowed us to continue development of that transceiver. So we wound up uh, making uh, two models, and uh, it used a uh, modulation technique that was, we called infinitely clipped speech. So it was just on-off modulation instead of linear modulation. But we just amplified the voice, not quite infinitely, obviously, but uh, to, to a great degree. And uh, of course, it would be very noisy when you're not speaking. So what we did was we inserted a 30 kilohertz subcarrier, and that quieted it down until you spoke. Well, the reason that's important is after that, we had the contract for the lunar module transmitter and receiver, VHF transceiver, and we used that same modulation technique for the lunar module. And uh, we had that contract, and it worked out pretty well. But then they had the... Uh, uh, the death of the three astronauts on the command module 
uh, with, due to the high 100% oxygen atmosphere. So uh, there was a big hiatus in the program at that time. Uh, on the command module, the VHF transceiver contract was with Collins. Uh, so during that time, we had the opportunity to uh, go to North American Aviation down in Downey, California, <coughs> and demonstrate our VHF transceiver. And the, uh, we did it through the Collins receiver. And the, uh, it sounded like a hi-fi set. The Collins engineer there was running back and forth thinking we had direct wires going back and forth. So uh, it, he looked on the spectrum analyzer and it had all this grass uh, when you weren't speaking and then you spoke and the carrier narrowed up and it sounded great. We wound up taking the, uh, the job away from Collins at that time. Uh, there are, Collins has a great bunch of engineers. I think that's one of the only times that we got took a job away from them. So uh, I believe it was also used in the command module. Uh, we did that. And uh, also the astronaut's backpack had, I believe, the same type of technique. So that worked out very well. Uh, As you were working through this, did you feel that RCA valued what you did, that the people around you valued it? Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. <clears throat> it was, uh, we had, like I said, it was the opportunity for great assignments so uh, through my whole career mm -hmm. and uh, I appreciated them and they appreciated me I believe okay. <clears throat> okay and then you went on from there uh, let's see what did we do on that after that we uh, we did uh, let's see uh, well we did things like a 2000 watt transmitter at 150 kilohertz that had to be done in one month uh, we scrounged up uh, gigantic power supplies from Doc Keene. He didn't know it was going to be donated for, he thought he was going to get it back, but he never really did. And uh, the purpose of that was to uh, check to what the propagation of 150 kilohertz was uh, through a, the last atmospheric nuclear test. And uh, they flew, the, flew it in a KC-135 with about a half a mile antenna hanging out the back. And uh, I actually went and listened to it at a friend of mine's place, uh, Phil Katona, by the way. He was a very good guy at RCA. That I knew him since I was 12 years old down in Hamilton, New Jersey. And rode with him on the train for a couple of years and knew him for the rest of his life. Now, you also worked on the <coughs> rendezvous radar, is that right? Uh, no, I worked on the VHF and UHF uh, uh, on the command module and lunar module. And uh, after we were finished with that job, Ed Nossen took those two units and made a backup to the rendezvous radar. So uh, evidently that worked out very well. Okay. Yeah. Why did he have to make a backup? To the uh, I think they had some problems with the original rendezvous radar, mm -hmm. and they wanted a backup for it. Okay. okay. Um, what about your co-workers? Co-workers, <clears throat> well, there were a lot of them, uh, obviously, and uh, uh, L.K. Shock, good, good guy, uh, Bob Reese, obviously, and uh, let's see. And did you get along okay? Uh, uh, we got along great with uh, everybody except one gentleman who shall not be named, which is natural for any uh, environment. Mm -hmm. um, was there any activity outside of work? Did you ever get together with any of the RCA people? Uh, yeah, we've had a uh, duplicate bridge at each other's house and uh, what have you. and. Uh, or the RCA parties, the R3 Victor AA. We went to a lot of those uh, dances, dinners, and had a great time. Usually had about four a year of those, so that was a good chance to get together with people outside of work. And Sam, then you take a refrigeration course at the <laughs> local school. Yeah, yes, we did take a refrigeration course at the uh, Camden County Vocational School, and um, among other things. <laughs> So what was it like working for a company like RCA? 
Okay, uh, I'm sure everybody had different experiences, but mine was good in that, like I said, it did get very good assignments. And then uh, later on worked on things like the uh, C4 and D5 translators for the uh, instrumentation uh, on the uh, Trident missiles. They would uh, fire, I believe, one missile a year just to check out the trajectory of the uh, missile, make sure it goes where it's supposed to. And it received the GPS signals and uh, retransmitted it back down to ground for immediate and also a post-flight analysis of where the missile was. That was a good job. How did RCA support your technical know-how? Was there a learning environment? Uh, we did have some after-hours courses uh, with the hybrids, down with Frank Farmer down in, I believe, the fourth floor. It was the early version of uh, <coughs> not quite integrated circuits, but hybrid circuits. Uh, and there were other after-hours courses that we took also, digital courses, uh, Mike uh, Kleidermacher, Mike Kleidermacher taught the course. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had the uh, RF engineers learning a little bit of digital, max terms and min terms, all that kind of good stuff. There has been some discussion um, about RCA actually changing South Jersey. Do you have any impressions in that area? Well, South Jersey has changed with or without RCA, <laughs> but uh, remember the early days, Cooper Street was a great street with doctors and lawyers along Cooper Street, and uh, Campbell Soup tomato trucks coming up the street, which was interesting, and we'd buy the tomato plants from Campbell Soup for about a penny each, and uh, had some great tomatoes. Uh, RCA, yeah, sure, it was... Uh, one of, the, one of the two big employers in Camden and Moorestown and Heightstown. Uh, I did work in Heightstown also for about three months stint when work was a little low here. So uh, that was an interesting uh, challenge also. Did any of your neighbors work for RCA also? Oh, yes. Uh, Roger Deventier, uh, yeah, Al Nelson. There's quite a, quite a few in the area, so much so that I was able to have car, get carpools all the time. <laughs> um, with your supervisors, what was your impression of your supervisors? Uh, well, like they're all different, obviously. Uh, mostly good, so uh, yeah. <laughs> there was uh, some challenges sometimes with. Uh, I don't want to talk to you about the challenges, but uh, we had some uh, a German uh, guy that came in here that uh, was the manager that was really just a consultant. That was a difficult time. So mm -hmm. there were times like that also. But that's life. How do you believe? How do you feel RCA was uh, was viewed in the industry itself? Uh, well, it was supposedly the most trusted name in electronics, and uh, I guess at one time it was, until then we got bought up, so that was, uh, it's just a name that's left right now, but it was a very trusted name. Mm -hmm. We've also heard of um, the RCA family. Yes, we had the family again, like with the Victor AA, and we had the Victor Family Magazine also. It would come out occasionally, and... Uh, we got to see other parts of the company and uh, people, the outside activities of the people. But did you feel like you were part of a family? Uh, yes, yeah. We had a lot of friends, obviously. Like I said, we even uh, we had duplicate bridge over. We had eight people at our house doing playing duplicate bridge, and we just uh, exchange houses and do that at the same. Do those kind of things, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, in summary, your career at RCA was it a good good drive? Just a job? How how would you summarize it? Uh, it was a great job. Uh, again, the last job I was on was uh, space station. I was responsible for the uh, KU band transceiver that 
coincidentally is visible from outside of the space station on pictures that you see of it and uh, it's even on some models in some of the museums it uh, communicates with the uh, uh, what they call the Tidra satellites to rebroadcast video and high data rate payload data down to earth at White Sands, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been an ongoing uh, program and uh, it's still working after all these years. Um, what about the uh, personnel department, um, the benefits? Um, did RCA look after their people? You really want the truth? Yes. <laughs> I had a little problem, so uh, didn't get, you don't want to, you don't want this part. <laughs> yes, actually, this is a history. This is a history. We absolutely do. Uh, okay, well, uh, I, I kind of think I didn't get the amount of retirement pay that I should have gotten mm -hmm. uh, due to a technicality that where I should have done it because I was born New Year's Day. And if you look at the uh, pension uh, plans, the uh, Social Security, mm -hmm. if you're born January 1st, you should, your date is really the previous day. So uh, I should have gotten more money because I was born officially the previous year. Now, which company did you actually retire from? Retired from L3. L3, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and what date was that? That was uh, beginning of uh, January 1999. Okay. So you actually got the L3 pension then? L3 pension, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, anything else that, uh, that you'd like to add as far as uh, your impressions, um, the, the journey that you were on in this? Okay. The journey I was on, I think, was, was great until I retired. Looks like things have gotten a little tighter since I've left. That's my impression right now. It seems to be a lot more fast-paced right now. We were always schedule-driven before, but it seems more intense right now. Okay. okay. Super. Can I ask you a question? Sure. John, could you take a minute to go over the transition? from the RCA, RCA, mm -hmm. to L3. Okay, uh, well, I guess in 1985, uh, GE bought us, and uh, that's, I think that's when that was, and uh, uh, that was a little culture shock. Uh, they sent some of their people in, and it didn't seem quite family-like at that point. So um, then we were sold to Mar Martin Marietta, and I remember giving a little talk on Space Station one time and pointed out that the name on the podium was on with Velcro, so it can be changed at any time, which came true when we merged with uh, Lockheed to become Lockheed Martin, and subsequently sold, spun off to L3 Communications. Okay. Of all of those companies, where would you say was the best work environment? Uh, definitely RCA. Mm -hmm. Definitely RCA, yeah. Mm -hmm. 